Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're in Ontario's Kawarthas at Crooked Lake Wilderness Lodge. Our quarry for this week are bass, both smallmouth and largemouth. We'll talk about equipment, flies and techniques. It's gonna be another great one, folks, so stay with us, we'll be right back. On today's show, we travel only two hours from Toronto, Ontario, and visit Crooked Lake Wilderness Lodge, located in the heart of Queen Elizabeth II Wildlands Provincial Park. Our host and guide is Dr. Kerstine Kelly, owner of Crooked Lake Wilderness Lodge. Also, guest Brian Nason has graciously volunteered to help guide me during my stay. Our journey began with loading our equipment into a plane and flying it in. We opted not to fly in personally, but take the picturesque journey by boat into the lake. I had been told that this two hour trip was very beautiful and I didn't want to miss the sights. The trip into the lodge is part of the adventure. It takes about an hour of mostly boat rides, separated by a couple of easy strolls on some nice, well-groomed pathways. The beauty of the portage is it's an excellent time to bring in your camera, take some pictures of the beautiful waterfalls, the flowers, and the wildlife that you may see on the way. You can always be guaranteed to see some great blue herons. You might see a bald eagle. There'll certainly be beavers on the way. You'll have a very nice time. Now what we're doing this morning is we're trying to cover as much water as we can. So we got the trolling motor on the, on the boat, the electric trolling motor, and we're just running and gunning. And what that means is we're gonna go from spot to spot, four or five casts, move on. We're gonna try to cover as much water as possible and try to find fish. Fish on. Yes, sir. So the run and gun move method is working. And this guy, he feels pretty good. I don't know if it's just that the boat's moving or what, but he's staying down pretty good. So that's a start. Just run and gun. I'm hitting, trying to hit the pockets in between the weeds. Nice little large mouth here. Barbless hooks. But not bad, small, but not bad. So what I'm trying to do is when I'm casting in, I'm looking for indents. Little indents in the, in, the, in the weeds where they can ambush. And as soon as I hit an indent, I'm getting a hit. So that was not too long ago. We, we just started about 50 yards back there and I got a fish already. So this is a good method just to find fish. There are many different species of bass found in North America. With the two most popular being smallmouth bass and largemouth bass. Identifying smallmouth bass from largemouth bass is as easy as looking at how far back the mouth of the fish extends. If the mouth of the fish extends only to the middle of the eye, it's a smallmouth bass. If the mouth extends beyond the eye, it's a largemouth bass. Body markings are also a giveaway. Largemouth bass have a definite black lateral line and their color is green. The smallmouth has vertical black lines, especially on the cheek, and is brown in color. Well, the lodge was originally built over 100 years ago by a steel company from the States. The Andersons built a bunch of dams and built the original lodge, and it's been expanded by previous owners. We bought it about 10 years ago in a dilapidated condition and have spent the majority of the last 10 years renovating it. We've had small groups up over those 10 years and they are regulars. Once you come here, you love the place and you come back again and again and again. When choosing a technique for success when you bass fish, you have to consider two factors. Whether the bass can be caught below the surface or on the surface. The answer is based on a few simple factors. What the bass are hunting for in terms of forage and of course the impact of weather time of day and time of year. For instance, early in the season, when the temperatures are warm and the water is calm and quiet, a popper would be a good choice. This frog pattern makes noise and will cause the bass to look up. Further, if it were the fall and cold out, 
We would not expect the bass to be taking frogs on the surface as it's too late in the season. Though they would probably chase a streamer that looks like a shad. If you've not fished for bass before, these are things you will quickly learn. There we go. <laughs> All these giant fish around there. And eventually I'm going to find the big brother to this guy. Although it is getting better, but not much. Okay. Now again, the run and gun method that we're using, we've now moved over to the other side of the lake, which this lake for its size isn't really big, so it only took us a few minutes. I want to find some fallen rocks. Uh, some structure on the bottom for smallmouth because they really like the rocks. Uh, the, the, they'll be in the weeds too, but not like they will be in the rocks. You have uh, better quality water there. And right here, you can see over to the right, I got some rocks here I'm gonna cast to them. There we go. Boy, that stopped solid. That stopped solid. This one's staying down a bit longer. I'm in a lot deeper water. But I don't think this one's all that big. We're getting there. And barbless hooks. That's a nice little largemouth. I'm surprised to find them here because we're in deep water. But that's a largemouth. And what I'm doing, I'm casting towards the shore and I'm giving it a good full 10 seconds to sink before I start retrieving. Because this is about 16, 17 feet deep, so I wanted to get it down as far as I can. Only 10% of the water at any given time possesses a combination of ideal characteristics bass prefer to habituate, and overwhelmingly, the majority of bass will be found in that 10% of water. When trying to locate any bass, you must think structure. This structure may be the edge of a weed line, a felled tree or brush pile, an isolated rock, or anything man-made such as a dock. Bass are extremely object oriented There's a saying, you may find structure that is not holding bass, but you'll never find bass without structure. Meals at Crooked Lake Lodge are tailored to your individual needs. Our chef will recommend a menu and you can certainly alter it in any way so that you get exactly what you want and have the experience that you'd like to have at Crooked Lake Lodge. The service is fantastic. They, it is a family run business and you are made to feel like family while you're here. Um, the accommodations, the rooms are very, very clean, comfortable. Um, you couldn't ask for any more at, at this type of a location. Food is out of this world. They keep you well fed. Uh, you will not go hungry. You will enjoy every minute of it, but uh, they, they also make sure that you're in and out as fast as you need to be, seeing it back on the water. That's a better fish. Yes, sir. That's a much better fish. Yeah. It paid off. It paid off. We got some good advice from one of the other guests here as far as uh, where to fish. And that's, that's a good point. Whenever you're anywhere, listen to other people that have fished there. They know what they're talking about. Yeah, this is a much better fish. I had to get him actually on my reel. He's staying down. Yes, sir. Better. And there's a good size smallmouth for you. And you got all hung up in the weeds in the bottom. Give them a bit of slack. When you give them a bit of slack, they'll move. But that is much better. That's well, that's a largemouth. I'm sorry I'm saying it was a smallmouth, it's a largemouth. But that's a little better.
Ah. Ah. Now, where I was fishing, there's this log here, and it's a single solitary piece of structure that will attract big fish because they can hide under it in an ambush. Exactly what I've been talking about the whole show is ambush areas for the fish. And this single solitary log is, is a good spot that you can try. 95% of any bass food normally consists of frogs, minnows, leeches, crayfish, and mayflies. Size does not seem to matter at times as aggressive bass quite often attack large baits. Flies that we used on this trip that imitate these foods are balsa wood poppers and foam poppers to imitate frogs, streamer patterns to imitate minnows, zuddlers to imitate leeches, crayfish patterns, and a dry mayfly pattern called a rat-faced McDougal. That's a better, that's good fish. I think it is, anyways, yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad at all. Well, we found our spot, and it's a solitary log, and again, structure, structure, structure. Then presentation, and presentation is the, the gurgling and the popping of the, of the fly has attracted them. It's early morning, and there's no sound on the water at all right now, so the gurgling really attracts them. Yeah, another decent fish. There we go. There we go. And I'll catch these all day. I love them. I think I might have taken the, oop. I was just about to say I took the dominant fish out of there, but maybe not. Not a very big one. But I am hitting a cash cow here as far as fish around this log. There's quite a few of them around here. I come here because it's remote it's easy access, fabulous place to fly fish, which is what I predominantly do. Great structure, lots of logs that have fallen down, lots of rocks, rocks, lots of remote places where you can get away from the wind, and it is just fabulous fishing. Well, right where you should have been, right in the weeds. And this one feels like a better fish. He's pulling hard anyways. Yeah, not a bad one. Not a bad. We're going in the right direction. Now, I'm barbless, so I gotta, I gotta keep the line tight. That's absolutely necessary. I've lost a few because of the barbless, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, and I just lost another one. Most anglers like to use a nine foot, six weight to an eight weight rod to cast. The size of rod you choose really depends upon the type of bass fishing you're likely to face. Many river fly fishers like to use a six weight rod wherein anglers who fish lakes around heavy cover and cast big topwater flies like an eight weight. Match your rod to your conditions. Basically, your fly reel is going to be used for storing your fly line, so an expensive drag system is not necessary. A simple click and pawl reel is more than adequate. There is also specialty lines specifically engineered for bass. Comparing a normal weight forward floating line with a specialty bass taper line you notice the line combines an aggressive, short bullet-shaped forward taper. This taper is designed for casting and turning over large, wind-resistant bass flies. Oh, he, he, moved, he moved a lot of water when he hit it anyways. 
Now he's not huge, but. Why haven't you jumped yet? <laughs> It's not bad. That was better fish. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Not overly large, but he's pulling deep, deep. Oh, and he let go. Oh my, oh my, well that happens. That happens. Now, what I want the camera to look at here and show the audience where we are. This is a bit of a channel going through some weeds and it, it's in perfect ambush spot. You got a channel going through with weeds, weeds for them to hide. Anything goes through there, they can hit. We got uh, more of a, uh, an inlet over here where I can cast, and anywhere around there, I, th I feel there's gonna be fish. I even got some rock points here, so that, that, this is a perfect spot. Great spot to bring your family, even if they don't fish. Um, you, there's great swimming off the docks. You can, usually when I come up here one half day, I get a little tired of fishing all the time, it gets too hot, I'll sit out on the deck and just look at the scenery, it's incredible. Uh, great fishing, you wanna bring a book up here and read. You can do hiking trails. It's not just all about fishing. At Crooked Lake Lodge, you can often see all kinds of wildlife. We have deer, moose that have been seen, occasional bear in the distance. They've never been a problem here. We have lots of great blue herons. There's over 50,000 species of vegetation in the Queen Elizabeth wildlands. So just about anything that you can see in Ontario, you can see at Crooked Lake Lodge. We have lots of active beaver dams and it's an excellent area for photography or just nature watching. As we have always strived to tell our story as it is, this was not my lucky trip. And that's just the way it is and part of fishing. While I had nonstop action and an awesome time, that lunker of a fish eluded me. That was not the case for others in the lodge as many other fishermen got their trophies. It was my last evening of the trip, and I still wanted to try for that lunker. So Kerastine and I got back in the boat for one last try. That's a better fish. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, he's fighting better. Right off the mouth of this little crick. Run up the top, buddy. Yeah, that's a better fish. Much better. Oh yeah. Structure, structure, structure. Now the structure here is an incoming stream with a little bit of a log there. And he was right off the end of it. And let's see if I can bring him to Now, that's a little better. That's a little better. Nice large mouth here. That's more like it. Now, they're much larger in here, but I'll take that. There we go. Just took a minute. Yeah. Having some fun here with some dry flies in the evening. It's right after supper. Noticed a few rises, so put on a dry fly. Now all I'm doing is an attractor fly. Something big and buggy. And this guy's staying down better. Whoa, yeah. Maybe a little better fish. Yeah, better fish, much better fish.
nice smallmouth here. There you go. That is a decent smallmouth. There we go. And he's probably 14, 15 inches, but it's a decent one. The two things that you should learn from today's program are structure. You got to find structure in order to find fish. And the second thing is presentation. You got to make your fly look like food. You put those two things together, you're going to have success. I want to thank Crooked Lake Wilderness Lodge and Kerastine for the invite. Glad to have you. For more information on today's show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more.